There are three potential mechanisms that have been proposed to stimulate muscle growth. Mechanical tension, metabolic stress, and muscle damage. However, recent evidence suggests that mechanical tension appears to be the primary and potentially only mechanism responsible for triggering hypertrophy. However, it is not very well established what mechanical tension actually means when it comes to lifting in the gym. So in this video, we will explore what exactly mechanical tension means and how it can be used to maximize muscle growth. First, let's try to answer this question. What is mechanical tension? This idea was popularized from Brad Schoenfeld's 2010 research review exploring the mechanisms of muscle hypertrophy. In this paper, mechanical tension was defined as mechanically induced tension produced both by force generation and stretch. Now, this definition is not very clear, nor is it practically very helpful for us when applying this theory into practice. Lifters have commonly assumed this to mean that more force generation and more stretch are the only important factors for stimulating muscle growth. And in practice, lifters have taken this literally to mean that you need to train with heavy loads and always need to lift heavier weights each session. While it is important to apply the principle of progressive overload across your training career, this idea of maximizing mechanical tension can also be taken too literally. This interpretation can simply be challenged when looking at the effects of load on hypertrophy. It is well established that similar muscle growth can be achieved using a large variety of different rep ranges and loads. There are multiple meta-analyses showing this, including this one, which compiled the body of evidence looking at how load influences muscle growth. It was concluded that when training close to failure, muscle growth seems to be similar on a per set basis when training across a large spectrum of different rep ranges and loads. So this already conflicts with the idea that more load means more muscle growth. Furthermore, we may require lighter loads to be used when considering lifting technique. The technique that allows the most weight to be lifted is usually not the same as the technique which maximizes stress on the target muscle. To lift the most amount of weight possible, we simply want to use the most biomechanically efficient pathway. In practical terms, the technique which allows you to lift the most weight. However, for hypertrophy training, we generally see superior growth using these general technique guides. Full range of motion, a controlled eccentric tempo with minimal stretch shortening cycle, strict technique with minimal involvement of other muscles and joints, and a technique which maximizes stress of the target muscle. For example, a powerlifting style low bar squat to parallel usually allows trainees to lift the most amount of weight. However, a high bar upright full depth squat with no bounce from the bottom will probably induce a superior quad hypertrophy stimulus, even though it requires lighter loads. So once again, the interpretation that more load is what stimulates muscle growth doesn't seem to be entirely accurate when it comes to muscle growth. Another related factor regarding mechanical tension is the stretch element. Going back to our definition of mechanical tension, this paper suggests that mechanical tension can be induced by both active force generation and also by stretch. Emerging evidence is starting to suggest that the stretch element seems to play somewhat of a role in the muscle growth process. There are numerous studies finding superior muscle growth when training a muscle in a more lengthened position. For example, this study explored the effects of performing seated versus lying leg curls on hamstrings hypertrophy. Trainees performed the same leg curl training protocol using a seated leg curl with one leg and the lying leg curl with the other leg. Based on the anatomy of the hamstrings muscles, the seated leg curl places the hamstrings in a more lengthened position, while the lying leg curl puts the hamstrings in a shorter position. It was found that the seated leg curl resulted in superior growth of all hamstrings muscles, shown in the blue, compared with the lying leg curl shown in the orange. The only exception to this was the short head of the biceps femoris, whose length isn't influenced by hip position. Furthermore, there is some evidence indicating that stretching alone may be somewhat hypertrophic. For example, this study explored the effects of static stretching on muscle hypertrophy. Subjects had one of their ankles held in a dorsiflexed position with an orthosis for 60 minutes per day for 6 weeks. It was found that the gastrocnemius saw around a 15% increase in muscle thickness in the calf being stretched. This evidence suggests that stretch seems to play somewhat of a role in muscle growth, possibly by increasing mechanical tension. This may be explained to some extent by the length-tension relationship of muscle fibers. This graph shows force generated at different muscle lengths. The highest active tension is observed at approximately resting lengths for most muscles. 
When the muscle is shortened, it is not as strong, and when it is lengthened, it is also not as strong. However, the muscle also generates passive tension, which can be thought of as elastic-like tension when you stretch an elastic band. As a muscle is lengthened, there is greater passive tension, even though active tension is reduced. So total tension is generally highest for most muscles in a more lengthened position. So this passive tension has also been thought of as a contributing factor to mechanical tension. Another relevant principle that can be extrapolated from the mechanical tension mechanism is progressive overload. We want to increase mechanical tension over time to achieve some sort of progression. While we don't necessarily have to try and lift the most amount of weight possible within a session to maximize muscle growth, we still want to try and lift more weight or perform more reps over time with effective technique. This doesn't mean you have to lift more weight every week, it just means that over time, lifting more weight or reps is usually a good sign that muscle growth is occurring. You don't usually need to force this to happen, it should naturally occur as a result of effective training if you were training with sufficient intensity. And the rate of which progressive overload occurs is different for each lifter based on lifting experience, diet, sleep, stress and other lifestyle factors. So going back to the original question, what is mechanical tension? Well, it is still not entirely clear what exactly this concept means in a practical sense, but I think it is more helpful to think of this in the following way. Mechanical tension can be thought of as the internal stress experienced by the muscle fibers. So mechanical tension is not purely about the external load lifted, it seems to be more about local muscular stress when it comes to hypertrophy training. It is certainly important to lift heavy enough to challenge our muscles, but it is not the only important consideration. This is probably why muscle growth can be achieved using various different rep ranges and loads, because the muscle is significantly stressed in all cases, if we are training close to failure that is. And this is probably also why training with strict control technique is usually superior for muscle growth, because it results in greater local stress to the target muscle, even though it requires lighter external loads to be used. So taking all this information into consideration, let's now establish some practical recommendations. Mechanical tension appears to be the primary mechanism responsible for stimulating muscle growth. The exact meaning of this concept is not entirely clear, but a good practical guide is to think of it as internal muscle stress. This means that trainees should try to maximize tension on the target muscle by using strict technique, taking each set close to failure, with challenging loads within the approximate 5 to 20 rep range. Furthermore, this doesn't necessarily mean that you should try and always use the heaviest load possible. This may be less effective at stressing the target muscle if you are compromising technique or training with rep ranges that are too low. However, from a long-term perspective, we want to see progressive overload by increasing mechanical tension over time. This means that over time, trainees should probably see some sort of increases in load lifted or reps performed as a result of effective training. And lastly, passive tension appears to promote high mechanical tension on the muscle via stretch. This has a few practical recommendations when it comes to lifting in the gym. First is that it reiterates the importance of training with a full range of motion, especially in the lengthened position. Second is that we may want to implement some exercises in our training routine which train the muscle in a highly lengthened position. And lastly is that it may possibly be a good idea to implement some slight pauses or control the eccentrics extra slow in the lengthened position of some exercises. Trainees can use these general guidelines to maximize mechanical tension. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.